we have to be able to show the developers that we will have the workforce that they need going forward. The government has a target of 40,000 new jobs in renewables by 2020. Because it's on our doorstep, we can do so much up here with it, rather than having to go away. North Highland College UHI has a lot to offer. To 8,000 students spread across five campuses in Scotland's northernmost tip. Here in Thurso, one group of engineering students are benefiting from a course with a difference, the Engineering Apprenticeship Programme. Not only does the college teach and train these engineers of the future, it pays them a wage. In the first scheme of its kind in Scotland, the students are apprentices and the college is their employer. Well, engineering. Um, I've always fancied engineering now since I was about six years old. Um, just working with my dad's tools in the shed and garage, um, and just basically having to maintain what we have in land in Orkney. Through work I've done in school, uh, textile is mainly and crafting design. We've done a lot of metal work stuff, and I knew it was a big part of the mechanical engineering course. Also, uh, when I'm working with my dad on cars and uh, just in the garage, doing different stuff on metal, uh, it just all led to me wanting to do this. The stuff I do here, um, learn a lot of new um, skills, experiences, um, and the values of them would be where you need to take them in the future. Working on air compressors and stuff like that, just uh, taking them apart, seeing how everything works inside, just like repairing stuff, maintaining it, and then putting it back together, it's all like a big step in the engineering business. It's amidst the changing industrial landscape that the apprenticeship scheme has been set up. Doonray Nuclear Power Station has long been a big employer in the far north of Scotland, but it's now being decommissioned, its reactor parts packaged up ready for removal. And so the industrial focus here is shifting. There is huge investment in renewable energy, wind, wave and tidal, and there are big expectations of what it can deliver to this area's economy. Just beyond the Caithness shoreline is the natural resource that's driving what's being called the renewables revolution. The Pentland Firth and Orkney waters generate immense power. It's now being channeled towards profit and opportunity. Somebody said it's like the Atlantic Ocean emptying into the North Sea and then the North Sea emptying back into the Atlantic Ocean. For centuries it's been uh, renowned for uh, you know, great power that affects seamen and the shipping. Uh, and so now um, through a lease by the Crown Estate, uh, seven developers have come forward who are harnessing that power. And what you'll find is around about 2014-2015 Devices will be going in there in arrays, multiple devices, and by 2020 it's believed there'll be over a thousand devices operating in the Pentland first, so some fabulous opportunities. You can see the Pentland Firth from the gates of North Highland College UHI. And the college sees the potential for industrial growth that could create thousands of jobs. And that's what this apprenticeship scheme is all about, looking beyond current economic uncertainties. We've got the Dunra decommissioning 
things are running down there. Local companies are unsure about taking on apprentices. Will they have enough work for them for four years? But we've also got all of these developers coming to Pentland Firth and Orkney Waters and we need to somehow make sure that they understand that there is an employable workforce in the area. So we thought one of the best ways to do that was to start with this pilot project, bring our own young people up and then show them that we have the intent and that we can grow this opportunity and eventually as things do take off in the Pentland Firth, other companies will then have the confidence as well to take on these apprentices. I've always been intrigued by it when I was young, so I, when I saw this in the newspaper, I had to just try and get it. I was really pleased that I did. Electrical engineering as a whole, it's just a new thing every day, a new task, and when you're out in the workplace, you're always encountering um, new problems and you're always thinking on your feet constantly all the way through the time, so it's a really good job to have and it gives you a good um, prospect in life because it is a well-paid job once you're qualified. When I'm done this, I'll be more employable for other people. The skills I learn here, it's very good to bring into the workplace because they're simulated to be as what you actually will find in the workplace. For 12 mechanical, welding and electrical apprentices, it's a comprehensive four-year training programme. In year one, they undertake an SVQ Level 2, performing engineering operations, and an SQA National Certificate in relevant and essential skills. On completing the first year, they do additional training, identified by engineering firms which are partners in the scheme. This allows the students to be work-ready before proceeding on to placements at these companies. And that's what they do in years two, three and four, work on a number of placements at different firms. It all leads at the end of the fourth year to an SVQ Level 3 in a relevant discipline. All apprentices who complete the programme will achieve the industry-recognised Modern Apprenticeship Certificate. Always had a keen interest in it since I was young. And then when I saw the opportunity to apply for a job, applied for it because I had an interest in welding. It's something that interests me for a while now and I, I seen this in the paper, so I applied for it and got a job. I was delighted with it. Yeah, really we do three main units, which is uh, stick welding, MMA, uh, MIG welding and TIG welding. So you have several things to do in each unit, different welds, different joint types, processes. Yeah, I'm learning how to weld obviously and uh, I've just finished doing my MMA NC piece so that's me started MIG welding now. I'm really enjoying it. The scheme began in 2012 at North Island College UHI in its e-tech facility, the state-of-the-art engineering, technology and energy centre. Hello, I'm Alan Ogg, I'm the Assistant Director of Learning and Teaching at North Holland College UHI. And today I'm going to give you a guided tour of the engineering, technology and energy centre at North Highland College. First off here we have our electrical instrumentation zone where the trainees learn all about the maintenance and installation of instruments and also about electronic circuits, building and testing as well. Further on here we have our electrical zone and the trainees in the electrical zone learn about installing and uh, commissioning and testing electrical circuits both domestic and commercial. They also learn about the maintenance of electrical equipment such as motors, control panels etc as well. To my right we have our industrial training rig which allows the trainees to get an industrial experience of working in a multidisciplinary team. Mechanical, electrical and instrumentation uh, trainee apprentices can work on this rig at one time uh, and learn all about working in a safe manner using method statements, risk assessments, etc. What we also have within our ATEC facility is also three breakout classrooms as well. That allows the trainees within the building to actually be taught the knowledge part of their uh, qualifications without having to go into our classrooms which are based next door. So this is a great asset for the facility to have. We, we call them dirty classrooms. 
We also have a technician's area within the building as well. Uh, the technicians are really important to make sure the, the machinery is all maintained. The technician's main job is also supporting the teaching activities as well, setting up experiments, labs, that, that type of thing. So it's important that the technicians are also in part in the, of the building as well. Further on, and going further down the corridor here, we have our mechanical work zone. In the mechanical work zone, the trainees learn about more traditional engineering, mechanical engineering skills like bench fitting, turning and milling, but they also do a lot of maintenance activities as well. Looking forward to the future, uh, in the Pentland Firth with marine energy, there's going to be a lot of maintenance required, so what we're doing here is we're teaching our trainees a lot of the maintenance activities they need to do when they're going out into the, into the workplace. I just put my safety glasses on before we go to the, the uh, building next door. Next door is the fabrication and welding workshops. What we have in here is a facility where the trainees who are learning to do fabrication and welding can get a real industrial experience of what it's like in an actual fabrication workshop. Uh, we have welding booths where we do TIG, MIG and stick processes and we also have all heavy fabrication equipment as well on the right hand side for the students to learn about the fabrication processes as well. Uh, the building has been based around uh, an industrial environment to make it as, as work-like and as a realistic working ex uh, experience for the trainees as possible. We've seen the value of working in partnership. So the college is involved, there's other funders involved, there's other employers involved, and everyone's come together to make this scheme work and to make it work well. It works with companies that have grown with the energy industry. Apprentices are given placements at firms like JGC Engineering. It began as an agricultural blacksmith more than 50 years ago but evolved into a precision engineering firm to meet industrial demand. Its demand now is for skilled manpower and it supports the apprenticeship scheme. We're quite excited about this scheme. Having people, a skilled people, good working people is the key to our business, it's the future of our business. We are currently committed to training, we're on apprentices in-house, have been for many years now, but really to, to get into the opportunities that is available in the market it is really not enough. We need to have more guys available to us to have a, a separate training scheme in place that's going to get more young people through to get them the core skills, uh, to get them in the industry quicker, if you will. It's, it's exciting. It's important that uh, what, what they're learning here is, is so they can get off to a good start when they come in on the uh, placement in second year. Uh, we, don't have to, we don't want to have to be going through the the very basic, basic stuff. If they've already come to us with that, with that training, it's easier to move on to the more uh, complex tasks which they'll be asked to do as they're going through their apprenticeship. It's not every day you get an opportunity like this. So well, I chose electrical engineering because I've always been interested in the electrical side. I do enjoy the mechanical side as well, but I thought the electrical instrumentation would be the best option for me really. It's quite interesting and uh, you can widen your skills every day, you don't have to do the same job. Well I'm quite interested in the renewable energy because there's quite a lot of wind turbines that are going up around this part of the country now so that should, that's probably what I'll hopefully get into.
The Highlands and Islands have long been wired into energy. Hydropower in the 1940s and 50s, then nuclear, then oil and gas. Here, industry has developed and depended on a supply chain of skilled engineers in the past, as it will in the future. If we don't have the workforce, it won't happen here. Uh, things will still get built, they'll get installed, but all you'll see is large numbers of people being brought in from you know, the Netherlands or from Norway. You'll see ships arriving and depositing them there rather than using the facilities of Caithness, and the supply chain actually won't get used. A really crucial point is that um, Scotland is the world leader in this. We're, we're five, six, seven, eight years ahead of the rest of the world. That means Scotland is at the heart. Caithness and Orkney are at the heart of this. And as this industry goes global, the, the companies who are developing in Caithness over the next few years, they only want to develop a supply chain once. And they want to take that to Canada, to Chile, to Japan with them. So this is like oil and gas in, in, in Aberdeen back in the 70s, the chance for Scottish companies to actually become the centre of it rather than being on the periphery. And that's the really wonderful thing about wave and tidal industry and renewables is it turns the edge, places like you know, Caithness and North Sutherland, actually into the centre of a global industry. And that's a chance for young people to be at that centre and make a, you know, a huge career out of it. I've just always been interested in engineering. I would have preferred to go into more of a man's industry but so I'm happy that loads of women are coming in now as well uh, I don't see why women can't um, I've just always been interested in it. my dad's an engineer so I was kind of brought up with the fact that I was more going to go into engineering than anything else and that's just the way it's always been Well my dad's an electrical salesman in WIC and he basically recommended it to tell me as a career and ever since the age of 12 or so he drilled it into me that uh, it's a good career to get into and it's great opportunities my dad's in the same field, so I've all sort of grown up around it, so it's just the uh, interest that's developed over the years and stuff I was doing in school as well helped develop it. I'm learning so much, it's beyond belief. Eh? I come in every day and I learn something new, one after the other, and it just all sticks with me. Well, there's quite a lot of opportunities coming up up here now with uh, Dunray and other places, especially with renewable energy and all that, that's on your doorstep as well, as well as offshore and Aberdeen and all that as well. So. It's quite good. It's been really, really enjoyable. It's only been my first few weeks, but um, I think it's going to get a lot better as the course goes on. Everything we do here is like a simulation of real-life situations and problems that we're, we'll have to face in the workplace. Everything from like taking apart compressors and learning all the different parts and how everything works to by just hand-fitting machine, that sort of stuff. It's the stuff that careers are made of. And for a dozen youngsters, at North Highland College UHI, this is the start. What lies ahead? Well, we'll see. In a year's time, we'll revisit the college to film their continued progress in a part of the world rich in renewable potential where the job of exploiting it will be down to its prime natural resource, its people.